Hi, I'm Brandon Cardwell, and I'm here at the University of Connecticut in Stores, where physics professor Ronald Mallet believes he's on the verge of creating the world's first functioning time machine. Nowadays, UConn professor Ron Mallet is making headlines, appearing in Newsweek, The Wall Street Journal, and even Rolling Stones magazine's Hot List issues. So what's all the buzz about? Mallet says that he has plans to build a real-life time machine. He believes he's very close to the ultimate prize, a real working time machine. Recently, Millet has published his landmark theories and took some time with me to talk about them. I've been able to show that time travel in the past is possible by using laser beams. Imagine that the coffee that's in this cup is empty space. Imagine that this spoon is the circulating light beam. So what you're doing right now is you're turning and twisting Right, space. exactly, you got it, okay. exactly. In other words, the circulating laser beam will be doing to empty space exactly what the spoon is doing to this coffee. It will cause empty space to swirl around. And eventually that twisting of space will twist time into a loop. And along that loop of, in time, we can actually travel back into the past. It's amazing. Building a time machine may sound silly, but Millet is not joking. So what made him actually get serious about this in the first place? His motivation began when he was young, under deeply personal circumstances. When I was 10 years old, my father, um, who was a very wonderful person, and he died totally unexpectedly of a massive heart attack. He was only 33 years old. And uh, I was completely uh, devastated. I mean, it just completely destroyed my world. One of the gifts, however, that he left me was uh, this passion for reading, which is something that he loved to do. And not long after he died, I came across H.G. Wells' book, The Time Machine. And that's the thing that saved me, because when I read that book, I had this inspiration that what if I could build a time machine, then I could go back and see him again. Along with the passion for reading, Millette realized his passion for writing by publishing a new book called Time Traveler, a scientist's personal mission to make time travel a reality. It's a general book. And one of the things I want to do is for the public to understand we really are on the frontiers of time travel. It's a memoir, and it's structured in such a way that people learn about time travel in my life and learn about uh, science behind it. Reviews of his book have been overwhelmingly positive. It's a book for anyone to read. It's, it doesn't have too much formula about quantum physics and things like that. It's general reading. It's understandable. If people have begun to accept his theories, will they also accept the notion of using time travel to change our world? Millet provides an answer to time travel ethics. What do you say to those who feel that you're, you're playing in God's territory? Well, I really feel that our brain is a part of the natural world. And if one wants to look at it from the perspective of, of God, which is fine, our brain is a part of God's creation. So I think that, in fact, it's the opposite. If we don't utilize our brain and our talents to the maximum to try to, to uh, control our environment and to use it for the best of humanity, I think that that is more acting against God. Before jumping ahead of time, the first step for Millet is actually getting the funding to prove his theories. The funding that we need just to begin this project mm -hmm. is something like a quarter of a million dollars. And that is what we would need to begin to show that the space twisting effect actually occurs. Because Millet's theories are based deeply on Einstein's work, the scientific community is very enthusiastic about this project's success. Brandon Cardwell, UCTV News.